Welcome Chem. Now today's video is on Chemical Thermodynamics Part 4 video and here we will deal with concept of enthalpy. Now before starting there is already 3 videos uploaded on Chemical Thermodynamics. You can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. Now let us start. Now since this Chemical Thermodynamics is a long topic, so we need a quick revision on what we have done. So previously we have done open system, closed system and isolated system. Right. So what are closed system, what are isolated system and open system we know. We also know types of processes that is isothermal process which is taking place when temperature is kept constant. Next is isobaric process when Pressure is kept constant and isochoric process when volume is kept constant. Right. Now, also we know another process where it is known as adiabatic process. That is, there is no heat exchange between system and surrounding. We also know what is cyclic process, what is reversible process and what is irreversible process. Right. So, reversible and irreversible is being known. So, these are the types of processes which needs to be mentioned in a thermodynamic process. Now, we also know that we have work, heat, internal energy and these work and Q that is heat has a sign convention and those sign conventions are already being mentioned and this is a very important part to be noted. Now, we have already dealt with the few topics of mathematics in order to go on through the chemical thermodynamics that is total differential, cyclic rule, Euler's reciprocity relation. We have also dealt with few things like state function and path function. So what are state functions and what are path functions we know till now and we also know what do we mean by a process which is expansion and what do we mean by a process of compression. So these are already being done. Now another thing which we know is that what do we mean by extensive parameter and what do we mean by intensive parameter. So these are being cleared up. Now, what are the expressions of different kinds of work which we know? The final expression which we know for work is W equals to minus NRT ln VF by VI. This is the expression for work. And we know now what is the statement for first law of thermodynamics which gives us du equals to dq dash plus d w dash and this d dash is being used because these are path functions whereas d u is exact differential right and another thing which we know is the expression for internal energy or energy function we know that d u equals to c v d t plus delta u by delta v at constant t dv and to be very specific about this we know that delta u is equals to cv delta t where cv we know that it is heat capacity at constant volume right so till now we know up to this part now in the next part we are going to deal with two things that is let us see, we are going to deal with CP term, not in details but in order to derive H that is this. Now chemical reactions are generally carried out under constant pressure rather than constant volume condition as it is easy to keep the pressure constant. Okay, And it would be useful to have an energy state function that has a relationship analogous to delta u equals to qv. Now at constant volume 
delta u is equals to heat at constant volume so we need such an expression for when the case is pressure is constant but at constant pressure condition under constant pressure condition we can write du equals to dqp minus p external dv that is we are ignoring the term that is vdp this term is being ignored right now see this one this can be written as dqp minus pdv now if we integrate this expression between initial and final states then we get uf minus ui and this on being integrated we get qp and qp since it depends on the path so we do not consider the final and initial state we consider qp only and here we take p multiplied by volume final minus volume initial and it is equals to qp minus p f v f that is pressure in volume at final state minus p i v i that is pressure in volume at initial states now you have to note that in order to evaluate the integral involving p we must know the functional relationship that is p is a function of volume thus in each of these cases we can write pi equals to pf equals to p as we know that pressure is constant so initial pressure and final pressure is same and if we rearrange this equation we can obtain the last equation which is given as uf plus pf vf minus ui plus pi vi equals to qp that is we are taking these terms towards this terms now because p v and u are all state functions so u plus p v can also be written as state functions so we can write this part which is present below can be also written as state functions right now this new state function which is being generated is known as enthalpy this point is important that is h equals to u plus p v as in the case for u h has a units of energy and it is an extensive property we have already dealt with what is extensive property in chemical thermodynamics part 1 video right so as shown in the equation 1 delta h for a process involves only pv work and can be determined by measuring the heat flow between system and surrounding at constant pressure so delta h is only the pressure volume work this one is very important part that is only pressure volume work is present in delta h and it is the heat flow during the pressure being constant and it is the heat flow between the system and the surroundings now this equation is a constant pressure analog of that equation which we have seen previously in our previous video that is delta u equals to qv and because chemical reactions are much more frequently carried out at constant pressure than constant volume the energy change measured experimentally by monitoring the heat flow is delta h rather than delta u when we classify a reaction as being exothermic or endothermic we talk about delta h and not delta u so when we had seen the graph of exothermic and endothermic we would have told that this is delta h negative this is delta h positive but why this is so because this is only the pv work and in experimental conditions we prefer to keep the pressure constant rather than volume constant now enthalpy is the heat absorbed by the system at constant pressure and it is utilized in increasing the enthalpy of the system so the amount of energy being absorbed is helpful in increasing the enthalpy of the whole system now we will deal with change in enthalpy with temperature so just like previously we had dealt with change in internal energy with temperature here we will deal with change in enthalpy with temperature so here we consider h to be as function of temperature and pressure okay now we do the exact differential that is dh dh is equals to 
delta h by delta t at constant p dt plus delta h by delta p at constant t dp and at constant pressure if we consider at constant pressure then we know that dp equals to 0 right so in this case we can write we can write dh equals to d dash qp which we have seen previously right and it can also be written as from this expression that is from this one if this is taken to be as 0 then it can be written as that delta h by delta t p dt right and if we take this dt this side then dqp by dt is equals to delta h by delta t at constant p and if you remember the previous case we had seen that dqv at constant t was equals to cv similarly in this case this term is equals to cp that is this is capacity at constant pressure right now this will be equals to delta h by delta t at constant p so this is done now from here we can write it as dh is equals to the same expression which we had written previously just we will substitute in the next line so we just write it first the total differential then we substitute in the next line now we get it as cp dt plus delta h delta p t at constant and then dp now we have just substituted here the value cp dt right so now again we do same as previous at constant pressure again as previous so dp equals to 0 right so finally we can write it as dh equals to cp dt and if we consider for finite chain just like previous cases we have done for finite change then it is integration over 2 to 1 dh equals to cp integration 2 to 1 dt provided cp be independent of temperature and within the temperature studied so ultimately we get it as h2 minus h1 which is equals to delta h and equals to cp t2 minus t1 for different temperatures at 2 and 1 and cp equals to then delta h is equals to cp delta t and the final expression we, which we get is delta h is equals to n cp m delta t and this cpm is molar heat capacity at constant pressure and cp is heat capacity at constant pressure now this much for today hope this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to subscribe the channel like share and comment